Um, I wanted to give a response to a couple of questions, then give you an opportunity, if any of you have any questions that you'd like to ask, uh, just for a couple minutes here, maybe 10. I, I have the ability to respond to one. One is uh, I got from email. It says, in our ladies' study, uh, we were discussing Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, regarding Christ being the firstborn of all creation. I know that he, it is referring to preeminence over everything, but I'm still not sure at the end of our discussion that most of us would be able to adequately explain what this phrase actually means. Can you elaborate on this, please? I think the, the issue that we have to come to is, in order to clarify this in our minds, is that words have various definitions. There's a most common definition, and there's a secondary definition, and a third definition, and there can be four or five definitions to a particular word, depending on how it's used and whatever context it's used in and so on. And so when you look at the, the word firstborn, it has several definitions. One would be the first one in a line of others that are similarly born, and it's like the oldest or the firstborn. And of course, there are cults who claim that that would describe Jesus, that he was the first thing created, and where it says that he is the firstborn of all creation, that means he is the very first thing created, and everything else that was created was created like him. Um, and so on. Of course, given the rest of the scriptures, we know that cannot be the definition of the term that is to be chosen. So the idea of firstborn being that he was created and everything else was created after him and, and, and like him would be inappropriate. An additional meaning to the word, like number two, if you were putting it in the dictionary and you were seeing this, the second meaning of the term firstborn uh, which the Greek word is prototokos, which is, you, you can see pro, which is um, a reference that could mean first, and then of significance. So it's like the preeminent one, or the one that has the greatest significance. And the idea there would be that uh, the firstborn of uh, all creation would not be that he was created like everything else, but in everything that's been created, he is above all that. Um, the firstborn of all creation. He's also called the firstborn uh, from the dead, meaning that there is the idea that his resurrection uh, was preeminent and that uh, all others who are raised would be raised similar to, to what he has known and that he is preeminent over the resurrection. And, so the idea is preeminent, and you mentioned that in here, that it's referring to preeminence over everything. And I, I think that's the best use of the term uh, for this idea of firstborn. I know that uh, uh, the, the texts of Scripture that, that address this, uh, there, are, there are various texts of Scripture, I think, that we would be able to look at. Um, in this, for instance, in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, it says that, um, that uh, those whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that Christ would be the firstborn among many brethren, meaning that he would be preeminent and everybody would be made like him. That's the idea of firstborn or preeminent ones. There's um, the Hebrews 1, 6, where it says, and when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. In other words, the firstborn into the world uh, obviously is not talking about how he is common with all other creatures, but at his incarnation, the preeminent one, as he entered into the world, obviously was not firstborn because there were others that were born before him, if it's talking about just a biological life but that he is preeminent above everything else that exists. In Revelation 2, 8, it says, And to the angel of the church of Smyrna, write the first and the last he was dead and has come to life, says this, the idea of him being the one who has preeminence over everything because not only was he eternal from the beginning and all the way to the end, he is eternal, he was dead, and he has been brought to life and is preeminent over all of those who are raised, so much so that anyone else that is raised will be conformed to him. So that's the idea, again, of preeminence. 
Um, Colossians 1.18, just a couple of verses later than the verse that was uh, highlighted for us in the question. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself would c come to have first place in everything. That really tells you what the issue of firstborn is most concerned with, him being in a preeminent station above all else, and we recognize that. Um, the, the idea there of firstborn, don't try to scrunch all the meanings together and have it all mean the same thing because it's inappropriate to refer to Jesus somehow as the first one created. That meaning of the term needs to be dismissed as impossible because of all the rest of the scripture teaches. So you go to the next meaning, which essentially means that he is preeminent to both. Um, he outclasses everybody is basically what's being emphasized. And we all would say, yeah, we get that. That resonates true with us. But firstborn in terms of the first thing created, uh, that doesn't resonate with the believer who sees Jesus as God, very God. And therefore, that meaning of the term can't be utilized. It can't be the one that's assigned here. Um, and I think that helps us as we look at this. To simplify it, there are various meanings of the word. We don't go with the one that is unbiblical everywhere else. We go with the one that is biblical everywhere else, right? And that just seems to be pretty simple. Uh, the hermeneutical principle for this, by the way, is that the, which hermeneutical means the laws or principles of interpretation, so the rules that we use to interpret scripture is the hermeneutical principle, is that the unclear always must be interpreted in light of what is clear. Never the other way around. You don't try to reinterpret what's clear because you've run into something unclear, right? It's always you interpret what's unclear in light of what is clear. Okay, so you start with what you know, and you broaden out from there. And in Scripture, the analogy of faith is that everything works. Nothing is intention. Everything works together, and there's no contradiction. And so what meaning of the word would enable no contradiction to exist with the rest of Scripture? And that's one you would use. All right? Hopefully that helps. Um, and uh, we are able to maintain the glory of Christ in a biblical way as we interpret that. Is there another question? Anybody have anything you'd like to ask? I'll take one from the, from, uh, from left field. Anybody have anything from left field? Yeah, okay, Robbie. Okay, I'll probably whiff. Yeah, I think, I, I, you know, the, it's, it is a question that's difficult, and I can't say that I understand everything. What, I'll just tell you what I understand. I might need to be corrected. That back in, 19, in the 1970s, mid-1970s, um, there, there was research done that utilized uh, tissue from an aborted fetus. Now, COVID vaccine is not continuing to use aborted fetuses in their research, it was something that's, that was historic, and it was the thing that started everything off, and that it's, it, it's not like they're currently using aborted fetuses. It, the, the research began with tissue that was from aborted fetus, and, and everything has kind of grown out of there as the research has been done with reference to the uh, various uh, SARS virus and other things that has been going, and then SARS kind of went away and the research was put away. And then when COVID came in, they just picked up that research that they had shelved. That's why they were able to actually make the progress they have made because there were years of research that had gone into this before uh, COVID-19 hit. And so they picked up the research and resumed it after that. Um, and so I, from what I understand, it's not like in order for the COVID vaccine to be utilized, they have to continue to abort babies to give them whatever it is they need for it. That, that's not what I understand it to be. Um, 
and I think because it's a historic thing and not recurring, that it places it into a different context because you're not going to change any of that, um, and, and, and it, it's just historic, um, or historical maybe, it would, the best word would be. Um, and as you approach it, I think it, at, at this point it becomes a matter of conscience. I don't think a person should try to impose their conscience on somebody else to get it or not to get it. I think uh, everybody stands and answers before the Lord for themselves. I think this is a Romans 14 issue uh, where every man, you know, some men can sat, consider Sabbath to be a special day and other men consider every day to be the same. Um, and yet the people who regard Sabbath as a very special day have all kinds of arguments for it. And those who say that every day is the same have all kinds of arguments for it. And so the wrangling about words and controversies and other things, uh, you know, we need to just back away and say everybody needs to do um, with a conscience before the Lord. I mean, not just every man do what's right in his own eyes. That's, that's a uh, description of chaos and ungodliness as it was characterized by the period of judges and so on. Um, where there was no king and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. We're not advocating that, but we are advocating that um, uh, with the presupposition that people fear the Lord and are wanting to do the right thing. That's, the, that's just generally the, 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 the seeding of territory to God's people, that that's, that's what's happening, that people want to do the right thing before the Lord. And with that presupposition, errant or correct, whichever it may be, but yet we charitably grant that as a presupposition, then everybody needs to do what is, what is right between them and God as they stand before God, knowing that they will stand before God. And so I think that becomes the issue. But I should probably look into it. I know that Al Mohler had a uh, really uh, good uh, commentary on this where he addressed that issue probably, I don't know, a month ago. That seemed very helpful. Um, that I would point you back to uh, the briefing by Al Mohler, and those are transcripted, and you can look at those or listen to those. I, I don't remember what the date is, but um, I, I thought that was so very helpful, and uh, I think, uh, um, yeah, that's, that's about all I can do with that one. <laughs>